Well, good morning and welcome to Daily Prayer. Today is Wednesday the 26th of April. I hope you're well. Do feel free to put something in the chat and let me know you're here. As always, we use the form of prayer written by the Reverend David Adam in his book, The Rhythm of Life. We we'll use one of today's Bible readings and a reflection on that reading. On a Wednesday, our theme for prayer is the Holy Spirit. And so we pray. The Spirit of the Lord fills the whole world. The Spirit of the Lord moves over the deep. The Spirit of the Lord warms our hearts. The Spirit of the Lord fills all things. Come Holy Spirit, come Lord of life. Come wind of heaven, come flame of love. Come giver of all gifts, come and fill us. And the psalm is Psalm 139, the Spirit of God is in all the world. Lord, you have searched me out and known me. You know my sitting down and my rising up. You discern my thoughts from afar. You trace my journeys and my resting places and are acquainted with all my ways. Indeed, there's not a word on my lips, but you, O Lord, know it altogether. You press upon me behind and before and lay your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It is so high that I cannot attain to it. Where can I go then from your spirit? Where can I flee from your presence? If I climb up to heaven, you are there. If I make the grave my bed, you are there also. If I take the wings of the morning and dwell in the uttermost parts of the sea, even there your hand will lead me and your right hand hold me fast. If I say, surely the darkness will cover me and the light around me turn to night. Darkness is not dark to you, the night is as bright as the day. Darkness and light to you are both alike. For you yourself created my inmost parts. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I will thank you because I am marvellously made. Your works are wonderful and I know it well. The Spirit of God is in all the world. And today we begin reading from St Paul's letter to the church in Ephesus. We pick up in Ephesians chapter 2. <clears throat> As for you, you were dead in your transgressions and sins, in which you used to live when you followed the ways of this world and of the ruler of the kingdom of the air, the spirit who is now at work in those who are disobedient. All of us also lived among them at one time, gratifying the cravings of our flesh and following its desires and thoughts. Like the rest, we were by nature deserving of wrath, but because of his great love for us, God, who is rich in mercy, made us alive with Christ, even when we were dead in transgressions. It is by grace you have been saved. And God raised us up with Christ and seated us with him in the heavenly realms in Christ Jesus, in order that in the coming ages he might show the inc incomparable riches of his grace, expressed in his kindness to us in Christ Jesus. For it is by grace you have been saved, through faith, and this is not from yourselves, it is the gift of God not by work so that no one can boast. For we are God's handiwork, created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. So part of Paul's um, explaining of salvation. <coughs> Excuse me. And so let me read a reflection. And this week they're written by Reverend Kate Bruce. And she says this. Imagine a scene. A throne is elevated on high, Sulphur wreaths around it. There is a tawdry allure to this place. The shrieking babble of those clinging to the throne is harsh and grating, appealing to a base desire to please the self above all else. This place pulses with wealth and lust. The stench of deception, corruption and denial is brushed away with clever words. Make no mistake, this is the throne of death. It whispers to the selfish heart, Come, ascend my steps, sit here, and all this is yours. Or what? Imagine another scene. By a river, with trees either side, people gather, drawn to one, rich in welcome, acceptance and love. People arrive in rags and find their clothes in garments of beauty. People with faces hollowed with hunger are given nourishment. The love-starved are fed. Honest lament is met with open embrace. There is new possibility for all who come with open hands and hearts. A sense of joy weaves through those gathered, shaping a desire to reach out and draw in the hesitant on the edges of the crowd. Here is love. 
Here is love like we have never known. Here is grace and mercy poured out without end. There is a kindness in the eyes of the one who welcomes. Not a passing superficial smile, but a deep, knowing, understanding presence. Come sit with me, all I am is yours. Quite a contrast, those two pictures. God who is rich in mercy. You might want to imagine that scene now that Missy's disappeared somewhere else in the house. That scene with the one who's rich in welcome and acceptance and love. A deep, knowing, understanding presence. And we turn to prayer, beginning with the collect for this week. Risen Christ, you filled your disciples with boldness and fresh hope. Strengthen us to proclaim your risen life and fill us with your peace to the glory of God the Father. Amen. And we continue in prayer on all who are dispirited and dejected, on all who've lost hope or joy, on all who are unable to cope, on all who are weak and heavy burdened, on all who are fearful and anxious, on all who are lost or have strayed, on all who are powerless and helpless, Lord, have mercy. Holy Spirit, bringing order out of chaos. Holy Spirit, breathing life into the lifeless. Holy Spirit, making strong the weak. Holy Spirit, guiding all who venture. Holy Spirit, filling all things, come renew the face of the earth. God of a deep and deepening peace. God of a calm that steadies our pace. May we take whatever moment we need to gather ourselves for the journey ahead. May we feel the rock of your presence beneath us, the assurance of shelter you provide and embrace, and the promise of company gathered close by your spirit, so that as we approach the unknown ahead, we remember a strength that can never give way. Amen. And we pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. The strength of God guide us. The power of God preserve us. The wisdom of God instruct us. The Spirit of God be within us this day and evermore. So may God the Father bless us. May Christ the Son take care of us. May the Holy Spirit enlighten us all the days of our lives. Amen. Well, thank you for joining me for prayer today. And um, if you're able to, we'll be back here for prayer tomorrow at 9.45. And folks will also gather in church for morning prayer tomorrow at 9 um, if you're able to do that. But uh, hopefully see you again soon. Take care. God bless. Bye for now.